go over it. So we talked about a place of safety, and I was thinking about, again, we, we kind of got away from our home. We were thinking about those folks down at the, in the Bahamas and various places. And I thought about that the other night, about the place of safety. And it's, we're safe in God, church, amen? amen? We have a safe place in God. We have a safe place in Him. And again, uh, and we all use the scripture, you turn with Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18 tonight. And it's really piggybacks. This was the main text of it. And so, since I was thinking about it, since we lost our video today, we can use it again for tonight. How's that? <laughs> and so, we want to re rehash some of this stuff. So, uh, I've been thinking about it, but God is a strong tower. Amen. Proverbs 18.10. The Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Again, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. So uh, we think about that, again, you think about a tower in itself, a place of safety. We mentioned about God is a place of safety. I was thinking about just dwelling upon the back of the hurricane, how many, as you see and pray for them, those that have lost everything, is seemingly. And so uh, houses are just shredded like paper. And so uh, think about having no place to go, no place to run to. Where do we turn? Now, I share with you over the weekend also about uh, sometimes through this disaster, it's a good time to really find God. To really depend on God. Amen. And so we have safety in God. We, we may lose everything. We may lose our, our health. We may lose our wealth. But again, at the end of the day, we don't want to lose our souls. Now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so it's safety in Christ. It's safety in Christ. And so we use this verse again. So the name of the Lord is, is, is strong. It's safe. Again, we are, we talk about salvation on night, about salvation that, uh, that derives from safety and safe and salvation all kind of accumulate together there and about self, being saved. Right? Saved or safe. And so being saved, we are saved because of Jesus tonight. Amen. We're saved because of him. And so we are safe, again, from uh, the sting of death. We're safe from, from hell itself. We've been saved from, again, uh, again, eternally being lost, but through Jesus Christ. And so the name of the Lord is that strong tower. Most important, we run into him. We now join him. We are now in his safety places. We'll come to somebody in a minute. But uh, think about a strong tower. Think about a fortress and a fortress and a fort. Uh, in the military terms, they have places where they would go, and those, uh, those towers were places of refuge many times, or places of safety where the defense would go, and really some of the strong places they were strongholds that they would have there. It was referring to the symbols of them. The righteous ran into it, and again, and it's, so the verse kind of self-explanatory, but the name of the Lord is power in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's safe. It keeps you safe. You pray to God, and demons, we said that night, tremble and fear at the name of Jesus. And we're safe because of him. We're safe because of the Lord our God. Let's go to Psalm 61. We're going to have you plunge through Psalms tonight. Psalm 61. And, and we will share with you how David, he had faced uh, a lot of the Psalms were written because he was on the run. He was on the run. He was on the run for his life, uh, the early part of his kingdom. And uh, even before he became king, he was really on the run from King Saul. And, and again, uh, what, what things that transpired, what we said, God always kept him safe. God always kept him safe. So a lot of these songs, a lot of them was from stories that you read about from Samuel and Kings, again, of his early life. And it's really his prayers. Prayers, prayers, prayers. He learned to pray. Amen. He knew how to pray already. But, again, these were brought out. He teaches teach us to pray. You go through things. He teaches us to pray. So thank God that these were recorded prayers from a lot of them from King David himself. Psalm 61 is one of the more familiar ones we, we look at. A lot of songs, S-O-N-G. Songs are derived from these psalms also. Let's look at verse 1. He says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. He says, For from the end of the earth when I will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Amen. So think about this. We say this song. You heard us sing this song before. So he's asking God, Hear my cry. He knew his safety was in God. He knew that God would be his help. So we've covered before. And when you go through things today, uh, come on, God. Call on God. And so we learn from him. He says, I call upon him. And he in the center of my prayer. At the end of the earth, I will cry. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, verse 2, overwhelmed, stressed. Stressed and wore out and just really overtaken by life in general. But again, we have a place of safety in God. You can rest in him tonight. Amen. Amen. You can rest in Almighty God. So he says, my heart is overwhelmed. Psalm 61, 2, my heart gets overwhelmed. Can you imagine not knowing? He probably couldn't even sleep at night. One eye open, one eye closed, sleeping because he was worried about 
happened to die, uh, uh, being killed. And so his heart was overwhelmed. Whether it was again, as he went on to be king, and no doubt the overwhelming stress of being king and the overwhelming things that go on in our lives. So he says, lead me to the rock that is high now. I go to a higher place, a place of safety. Rocks, no doubt, we find safety in the rock. Amen. In the various places, that are, this is because it's strong and it's fortified. It, it, it's, it's stable. Was everybody following that? Mm -hmm. And so it's stable. And so back to the strong tower, it's stable. It was strong. It's a place of safety where we can hide out. Remember how the storms, uh, growing up in the Midwest, uh, they used to have those tornado warnings. And then they would make the sirens. We had to go into the hallway, get on our hands and knees, and have to fold up. And they would tell us different places, like standing in doorways, or go stand in certain places. Why? Because these places were safe. Amen. They were safe. And so places that were strong, and, and they tell you, go, go go, to the basement, or go here, go there. Why? Because it was places of safety. And so the rock was a place of safety, where he felt, no doubt, comfort, and where he felt secure. Uh, again, Many times people hide in caves and various things and uh, places of safety. Another scripture talking about he hides me in the cleft of the rock. Little openings in the rocks where you can hide out. Amen. Mm -hmm. Places of safety. Let's go to verse 3. He says, for thou hast been a shelter. See that verse 3? A shelter for me. A shelter for us today and a strong tower from the enemy. This is where we sing this song. So again, uh, thou hast been a shelter. How many know God is a shelter tonight? Mm -hmm. A shelter from the storm. A shelter from the blast of the enemy. A shelter when things go on. We tell you how many times you look back and sometimes, sometimes we're protected from things we didn't even know would come our way. Mm -hmm. We were protected from things that we didn't even realize. And so God is our shelter. God is our strong tower. God is that thing. Again, he has kept us uh, from the enemy of our soul. The enemy paces back and forth of how he moves you back or how he can devour you. If he had his way, he would destroy us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you go back and look at Job. <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, again, uh, he was negotiating with God trying to get a job. And uh, the Bible says what? He says, you, you, can, you can do whatever you want to him, but you, you can't kill him. Amen, basically. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, think about that. But, uh, again, but in Christ, in Christ, our uh, God, he was able to find safety, safety net, and how God protected him through it all. He may have lost everything physically and uh, uh, his possessions that he had, but through that, but through it all, God kept him. Amen. And he came out twice as better. Amen, because he kept his faith in Almighty God. Let's look at this real quickly again. So uh, he says, a strong tower from the enemy. The enemy of our soul. The Bible says he roams about seeking whom he may devour. He goes back and forth seeking whom he may devour. So again, it's so important to be in Christ, founded in Christ. Being saved keeps you from a lot of heartache. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. It really does. It's safe being in God. The streets that we talk about are some mean streets out there. And in, sometimes we, we live a very sheltered life. Think about it. Being a, being a Christian, it, it really keeps us from a lot of trouble. People are really going through things. You probably know people, or maybe even in your life, your own self, people are really going through some issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no pity sometimes. In their homes, in their lives, in their marriages, in their, with their children, they have uh, families. I was talking with a man the other day, and he was telling me, he, he works in a juvenile place, and he says, you'd be surprised what comes to that. Mm -hmm. These kids and, and, and the things and the situation, the ACS, and all the people want is uh, this is work at ACS, and how they, again, they, they just, uh, they come on just distraught at what they face and see. And no doubt we're thankful today, man. And so, but Christ is that answer. Christ is the one. So, getting in Christ is so critical. Again, it keeps us a lot away from a lot of heartache and pain. And again, we, we all go through things in life, but again, and, but there's certain things that God will protect us from. Amen? We're not exempt from getting sickness and all these other things that come our way, but it's good knowing Christ, amen, because he helps us through our sicknesses, amen. And let's go to uh, Psalms, verse 4 again. Let's read verse 4. I will abide in thy time, and I go forever. I will trust in the cohorts of thy wings. So again, he will trust, and he's going to believe in God. He's going to trust in God. He knows it's safe in Almighty God. I'm going to trust the pilot, amen. We're going to trust the pilot. It's safe in, in Almighty God. And so, uh, again, we, we want to look at it. Let's look at Psalms 27 also. Psalms 27. Psalm 27, safe, safe being saved, amen. Uh, one man was sharing, and he says, uh, what, if, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if there's no heaven? What if there's no hell? He said, well, if, if there's no heaven, no hell, he said, I, 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 I've lost nothing. No. He said, but if there is, I've lost it all. 
In other words, you know what I'm saying? A man was trying to say, hey, what are you wasting your time serving God? You're wasting your time. He says, man, if we get down to the end and we find out that there is none, what have I lost? I really haven't lost much. But if it is, if hell is, which it is real, it is real. Heaven is real. He said, and you don't fail to believe you've lost everything. Mm-hmm. It's safe being no trust in God. Amen. To trust God. And God that we have not seen, a God in which we cannot see by him, but we live by faith. Let's go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Let's look at this. Uh, verse 1, it says, the Lord is the light of my salvation. So again, the Lord is, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And really, we were talking about the, the deliverance of labor, deliverance from fear. And so, again, we are safe in God. We, we, we have a place of safety. So, again, when you think about that, when you're safe, you don't have to worry. It's the right for that. Mm-hmm. Because you know everything's going to be all right. I feel safe. Right? I feel safe in this vehicle. I feel safe in this airplane. And so, again, what should I, what do I have to fear? People are afraid to fly, or whatever the case may be. They don't feel safe. And so, but in God, he says, the Lord is the light of my salvation. So I'm safe. We're safe in this. Amen. Whom shall we fear? We're safe in our mind, regardless of what the devil may threaten you, may say, or regardless of what the doctor may say. But again, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, our God is in control. Amen. Amen. And I'm safe in all my God. He says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So God kept me every step of the way. God will defend you. Amen. Amen. We're safe in God. When the enemy and the backbiters and the haters come at you, he causes them to fall. Amen. The Bible says in verse 3, it says, though and host should encamp against me. In other words, a whole group will come up against me. A whole crowd of folks, he says. My heart shall not fear, though, uh, though war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. He says, I cannot feel safe. I, it's going to work itself out. He said, I'm surrounded by an army. He said, but I'm confident in God. Amen. Amen. I feel safe, mm-hmm. right? I'm safe in Almighty God. Even when, make think about the same man, David, when he faced Goliath, his brothers and all the armies of Israel were afraid, but he felt he was confident. He was safe. Mm-hmm. He said, he said, hey, we serve a living God. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Again, they're safe. You got, you got some power behind that thing. Mm-hmm. Someone was laying out a weapon. Amen. You feel safe behind that thing. Mm-hmm. Right? And so we have the ultimate weapon, the word of God. Amen. Amen. Sword of the Spirit today. Let's keep going. The Bible says, though and host should encamp against me, again, let's read in verse 3. He says, my soul shall not fear, though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Number 4, he says, one thing have I desired the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Verse 5, he says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Amen. He says, In the secret of the, his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Let's see that. So this is the verse where it gets you to. In the time of trouble, he puts us in a safe pavilion. Don't worry, man. Don't stress out. Just continue to look to God. He's going to be able to place us in a place, a pavilion is a, a safe place within the, I uh, refer to the tabernacle, but again, this pavilion is a safe place within the building. Uh, it's a nice place within the uh, uh, building or uh, structure. The pavilion is no doubt. And so, in this particular case, it was a pavilion inside the tabernacle there, a place of safety. He will hide me and set me upon a rock. So again, that's safe, that's strong, something solid, some firm foundation tonight. Amen? And then he goes a little further. Uh, he says, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will, will I offer it in the top of the sacrifice of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praise unto God. Amen. He felt safe, so he was going to rejoice. Let's keep moving. The Bible tells us in Psalms 31, we come to Psalms 31 also, safety. Tell us being safe in God. Safe in God. Safety in God. Number 19. Psalms 31, 19. The Bible goes and says, how, oh, how great is thy goodness. He says, which Thou hast laid up for me that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. 20, he says, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. He says, thou shalt keep them secretly in, in a pavilion from uh, the strife of tongues. That's so powerful. A safety place. Amen. People even talking about you. People are making threats at you. You're safe in God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do this to you. I can do that. But you know, at the end of the day, you're still safe in God. Amen. God is protection. 
And sometimes you face threats or face things up against you. Just stop praying. Amen. Stop praying for God's protection. God's hand upon you. Again, whether, again, threats will come up against you and I, but again, God's protection is there. Amen. Number 20, there it is again. Bless, so 21, he says, Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous and kindness in a strong city. Amen. So in this strong, we live in a strong city, church. Absolutely. <laughs> we live in a very strong city. Absolutely. Only the strong survive. Y'all remember this song? Amen. Song. It's called survival. <laughs> Only the strong survive. It's called survival. <laughs> <laughs> it was something like that. It was some old, one of the early hip hop songs. <laughs> and so it was called Survival. He said, Only the strong survive. And so they went on about that. And so only the strong survive. We live in a strong city, and it takes a big God. And so, uh, again, well, God keeps us safe in this strong city. Amen. A city with strongholds around, a city with many, many uh, obstacles and many things, again, with many challenges, but we're safe in God. So we put our trust in God. And God provide. He always does, doesn't he? Amen. And so we know as we moved here, we said many years ago, God, God didn't send me over here for me to fall to. Amen. Amen. He didn't send us over here for beginning of the day for him not to say, he takes care of eight million other people. He can take care of us. Amen. 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 If he takes care of them, he can take, how much more can he take care of a, a believer, a preacher, amen, or a Christian, or a man that would give his life, a woman that would give their life to God, and not even just a preacher, but anybody, amen. If you surrender to God, God will take care of you. It's safety in God, amen. Absolutely. He daily loads you with benefits, and so, again, they would, uh, they'd say, well, that's crime over there. Well, that's what we're going over there for. We're going over there to squash some of the crime, amen. Amen. And so, why are you not worried about this and the right? No, no, we serve a big God. We serve a mighty God. So don't fear, don't fear back to what we said. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Let's look, where were we at? Where were we at? 20, 31, 31. Let's look at verse 30, 21 again. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in the strong city. So again, in this city, this city, no doubt. But God, in this city, he's the God of this city also, amen. He's able to provide and supply every need according to his riches in glory. Let's look at, yeah, let's jump over to Proverbs. Back to Proverbs. I'm going to give you a few more. Everybody good? Amen. Safety, safety, safety. It's safe knowing Christ. It's safe. And outside of Christ is very dangerous, church. We don't want to step out again any day. It's, it, can no one do us like the Lord today, man? So Proverbs 21 also. I uh, have to jump back to it. Proverbs 21, 21, 30, and 31. 21, 30, and 31. The Bible goes this way. It says, there's no wisdom. No understanding, no counsel against the Lord. I want to read my brother up again. I want to bring it back. He says, number 31, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is in of the Lord. I want to bring these two verses up. The word for safe again, safe again. So he says, there is no wisdom, 31, 30. He says, there's no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord. Think about that. Everybody, any and everybody who tries to come up against God, he said, Nothing you can devise. Who can overtake God? Amen. Right? So back to the back there, I remember it said, The Lord is strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Right? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this? The fine God? Mm -hmm. We on the Lord's side, amen. Amen. We on God's side. And so when you're a child of God, when you're a believer in Christ, he says, There is no wisdom. Uh, let's read it again, verse 30. There is no wisdom. Man will conjure up all kinds of ideas, no doubt, to try to fight against God, but he can't do it, right? If he was to try to do that. There is no wisdom. There is no understanding. There is no counsel. Mm -hmm. He can bring up all, he said, I'm not, I'm not, bring all the United Nations uh, leaders together. And they can come up with a plan to stop God, but there is no stopping God. Amen. And so there's no stopping God. Hey, man, again, again, we are safe. Amen. Amen. I want to be on that side. On God's side, amen. The scripture asks a question, who's on the Lord's side? Amen. Who's on the Lord's side? Number 31, so he says, the horses are prepared against the day of battle. So imagine all these other great armies lined up with horses and chariots and all these different things. He said, but safety is of the Lord. So he can grab, grab every army, every military force you want to. Thank God for our military. I'm just saying, again, just to bring to light, again, the power of God and the safety of God. So when God has got his hand upon your life, when God is defending you, when God's protecting you, amen, there's nothing nobody can do. Amen. Amen. Maybe we'll jump to that other verse in Isaiah in a minute. But Proverbs 29, Proverbs 29, 25. 
Proverbs 29.25. Amen. 29.25. All right. So much in here. Uh, uh, he says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever, uh, whoso putteth his hand on his trust in the Lord, excuse me, shall be saved. There it again. The fear of man bringeth a snare. In other words, it's a hang up. Mm -hmm. You begin to fear. The Bible can talk about the uh, deliverance from fear. Again, there's torment behind it. Mm -hmm. There's bondage behind that thing. It will cripple you. It will keep you from trying. It will keep you locked up and shelled up. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and boxed up in them. And, and so, but the Bible says, uh, it says, but we, whosoever put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. And so don't be afraid. Again, it ain't to try. Don't be afraid to, uh, again, step out there by faith. Amen. God puts things in your heart. Amen. Don't be afraid to step out there by faith. Amen. And believe and take God at his word. Again, and so, as y'all know, the scripture in Isaiah also tells us what? No weapon. I'm going to finish up with this. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. What's that? Isaiah 50. Yeah. Let's turn to it. Come on, guys. Isaiah 54, somewhere in there. Let's look at it. Yeah, 54, 17. You got it in your mind, huh? Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's look at this. Yeah, that's a, that's a powerful verse. so much in there, but I'll, I'll give you that. Alright, the Bible says in verse 17, he says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. You see that? Mm -hmm. No weapon. Absolutely. Everything under the sun, he can throw the kitchen sink at you, but it will not prosper. Amen. No weapon. AKs, bazookas, grenades. <laughs> tongues of men. Yeah, tongues of men. <laughs> <laughs> no weapon, amen, can form against you shall prosper. Is everybody got that? In other words, spirits, these things, spirits we talking about, amen. He says, in every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Powerful. Amen. So again, think about that. There is safety in God and no weapon. No weapon tonight, amen. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. All right. Anything else? Anybody else? Questions? Thoughts? <laughs> Fears? No? Can we leave out here with no fear tonight? Amen? Amen. We leave out here with no fear again today. We are safe in God. It's important to be safe, to be safe in the Lord. I, I, was, I was reading other scriptures back in Luke when the prodigal son went back home. Bible says he found a safe place there. He was now safe again. Amen. It was safe in his father's house. And so, uh, again, he had run around and because the, 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 the man had come to him and asked his brother. There was, was, was a party going on. There was a celebration. And, and the brother was approached and said, hey, what's going on? The big man asked, what's going on? He said, ah, uh, my brother's come home safe and sound. That's what he said. He said, my brother's come home safe and sound. The Bible said, he got mad. He said, he should have been happy. Amen. But again, we have safety in God. So God, in other words, the story was to show us how that God, in his safety, the little boy, he, he went away. He went away. The young man went away out of God's safety. And every, he was vulnerable to anything. And that's really what happens when we outside of God, we're open to anything. Mm. Right? It's the truth. We're vulnerable. Absolutely. To anything. Absolutely. That's it. That's it. That's awesome, brother. That is awesome. He said, we're no longer under the shepherd's watch. Mm. Think about that. The shepherd sees us. He's watching over us. <coughs> He's protect. That's his job. The shepherd is to protect us. Amen. Amen. And so when one sheep goes astray, he goes out and finds it. Bring it back because he knows the wolf is out there. The lion is out there. And so when the sheep goes astray and wants to do his own thing, hey, he, he's not safe. Mm -hmm. It is not safe outside of God. And again, many say, oh, nothing's happened to me. I'm good. I've been living like this all my life. I'm telling you. But again, at the end of the day, it's the grace of God. Catch up. It's nothing but God's grace. Absolutely. And really, you may, when man takes a stand before God, God's gonna, I believe God's going to replay all of that stuff. I sent the soul word uh, in 1969. Then I sent another soul word in 73. And I sent somebody on your job. 
And I said somebody at the grocery store. Wow. I said somebody uh, in the train station. The man passing out flies. You put your earphones in. You don't want to hear what I have say. Hold it up. He's going to replay it. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Man's going to have an excuse. Go ahead. I remember Pastor James said that in order for a person to go to hell, they got to jump through so many hurdles. Yeah, that's Why? true. So without an excuse, we are so without an wow. excuse. God's grace has gone overboard. Absolutely. Amen. You look back over your life. Many times we didn't realize it at the time, but it was God's grace. Amen. It was God's grace stepping in, really just to wake us up and protect us and keep us along the way. I remember when I first got saved, and uh, this fellow was out there. I just came from like a Bible study or something. I don't know what it was. And you know, the guy we both lived in the very guy from a church. Sat there for a little bit because we always hang out. But he, he went up, he kind of looked at me like, Oh no, he's 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 a brand new Christian, you know what I'm saying? They had got there drinking and stuff, barbecuing. And so he said, You coming up? I said, I'll, I'll catch up to you, man. I'll catch up to you. I know in his heart and soul, he probably was praying so hard for me, <laughs> amen. And so, uh, and so I, I was hanging out there. I went, you know, I didn't have his eye and drinking all like that. And one of the guys was like, Hey, hey, we're locked, we're locked. Go on upstairs, man. Go on upstairs. Let the Lord work on you, man. Go on upstairs. <laughs> and he's like, I used to be a Sunday school teacher. It's people, people. He's like, go on up. Let the Lord, let the Lord continue to work on you, Whitlock. Go on upstairs. You don't need to be out here with us, man. Mm. Like that. And so, again, like you say, God, no doubt, uh, does that. And sometimes maybe through him. Mm -hmm. Just another blocker. Another blocker. Say, hey, hey. Because you never know. You never know. You never know. Hey, I'm, I'm able to give it in. Mm -hmm. Sat there a little bit longer, the aroma and whatever, you know what I'm saying? But we had a little tip in him, but thank God. Hey Amen. But I, I, I believe I already have my mind made up. I was just trying not, I was just trying not to put up a wall. Because mm -hmm. I was brand new. And I, I wanted to try to win them guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them thinking, you know, how they can hang with them. You know, I wanted to be, be, still be friendly. Because if he did it for me, I said, man, you can do it for all of them in there. Amen. All my buddies can get saved, man. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, no doubt, that was my thinking. Thank God for his protection through it all. Amen. Amen. But God always sends things to keep us safe. God always gives us a way of escape also. Absolutely. He gives us a way of that's escape. That's powerful. Amen. Maybe I have to pull it up. Yeah, that's good. A way of escape. Let me get it. My wife's got my... Let me get it. Oh, stay with me, guys. A way of escape. Romans 5, 1 says, Romans 5, 1 says, Okay. All right. God always gives us a way of escape. Think about it again because he, he wants to keep us safe. He wants to keep us safe. Um, you think about even just a, a traumatic issue or again, a traumatic, um, like, like an old action movie or whatever. There's always seemed to be a way of escape, isn't it? 1 Corinthians yeah, 10 13. 10 13. There it is. 1 Corinthians 10 13. We'll let you guys go. He says, look at this. Even. Mm, so much in 12. I'm gonna stack up the 12. I ain't gonna go too much deep back in 10 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take he lest he fall. Wow, you might see that if you think you stand take he lest you fall, right? And so sometimes, even back about saying, Hey, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna fall around my guys, but you never know. Hey, man, I was a wonderful young friend, Christian. Who knows? I could have fell back. Thank God, I'm hearing my man made up. But it says, take heed lest you fall. And even just in pride or whatever the case may be, keep your guard up. Amen. Number 13 says, there hath no temptation taken you such as is coming to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But uh, will with the temptation also make a way to escape. He says, that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. So opens up an escape. Absolutely. An exit ramp. A, 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 a miracle opens up. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Hey, exit. Mm -hmm. Leave now. Get out. Thank God for safety. Amen. Amen. A rescue hand reaches down in a call. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Reach up. All right, come on. Get out of there. Mm -hmm. Right? Safety. Thank God he's a delivering God. Amen. Amen. And so, as you look throughout your life, God keeps us safe. He's able to keep you in, 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 in trying times and temptation, you will face temptation. And the Bible says here, 
And so, but he always provides a way. He's not going to tempt you with nothing that you can't overcome. Amen. He's going to always do that to give you power to overcome. All right. God bless you. I pray we'll see you this Thursday evening, 7.30 p.m. Thursday night. And then our weekend. Come on and invite somebody. We have, again, our, our invitation in two weeks, 22nd, we have a big celebration. And bring out somebody right before coming. Amen. I want to bring somebody with you, each one, reach one, to celebrate with us the goodness of God. Let's make the devil mad. Amen. Amen. Let's make the devil mad on a uh, swollen sun. Amen. Amen. It's the, twice as many as we've had, we won't have steady room alone in this place. Amen. So come on and be with us this weekend. Yes. This Sunday? No, no. Well, we act like it's this Sunday. Start working on it as if this is Sunday. Yes, every Sunday. We want to be that way. If each one reach, bring two people. They might with you. We'll have three times as many. So if we have 40 uh, normally, and we have 120. No, no, is my math right? Yeah. That's 120. Think about that. Yeah. Just think about that, how that quickly can double or triple. Mm -hmm. Right? Have 50 in service. Man, just one more person, each one, break one. That's 100 people. Mm -hmm. Right? We can do it, church. Amen. Amen. We can do it. We can do it again. Why? Because we want to see somebody get saved. Amen. And so, again, it's best to have one on each side. Amen. Come on in. So grieve me in prayer with us. Continue to pray for the families that have been coming, new people that have been coming. We had a stream, new people that are coming in and pray for those that are sick. Continue to pray for us. We got a chance to go to visit someone, raise on life support, and give God's given a few days, but we continue to lift her up and pray. Amen. We got to have this way. And brother Wild, I'll ask for prayer too. All right? All right. Good night, good night, good night. We'll see you in a few days. Remember if you just missed this. Hey, Amen. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your word that went forward tonight. And we ask you, Lord, to give us hearts and minds to hide your word in our hearts and minds that we can live a life of abundance before you, a life, Father God, to impact others for Christ. We ask you, Lord, to keep your hands upon our pastor, keep your hands upon us, upon our congregation, and we ask you, Lord, to bring us back at the appointed time. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, folks.